Mulligans and Hackers Golf Podcast, episode number 67. We got the Halo and Tour Championship recap. Tour Championship. Yeah. Yes. Let's, uh, let's touch on Halo first, okay, I think. Let's touch on right. Halo. We'll start there, and then we can work to our way to our, our uh, two-day tour championship that we just uh, literally just finished right before we're talking about Yep, this. we're right from the golf course, right to here to do the, uh, to do the pod. So. Yeah, so, uh, so Friday. Uh, Friday was uh, the, our thir- third time playing in the Halo uh, tournament. Um, it's, again, it's a tournament that's near and dear to our hearts, uh, raises money for Halo, which is uh, incredibly important in Southern Alberta. Air Ambulance, Southern Alberta. Yep, yep. Um, um, again, it, was, it was our third year playing in their fifth year holding the tournament. Right. And, and this was the first year it was called the... Um, the Less Little. Less Little. Halo Charity Classic. Halo Charity Classic. So they printed these placards and handed them out to all the golfers. And this will be the f- only time they're ever printed and handed out. So it's a pretty cool thing to have. Yes. Um, so everybody who attended got one. Which is which is pretty cool, and for myself, Halo is near and dear because it actually did save the life of my father-in-law when he was out on a uh, work site and he had a stroke. They went and got him, got him to Calgary right away, and uh, he made a full recovery. So that's why Halo is important to us, important to me as a group. It's important to us because Darren played, Jacob played. Yep, Darren is my stepson, and again, that's his grandfather. So this tournament means a lot to us, and the Littles themselves. Yep, we I know mean, the Littles quite well. The Littles are. Are uh, near and dear to our hearts. I coached with uh, Doug, uh, coached his kids, um, so you know that whole cr- that whole clan is pretty close to us. Uh, you know, it's always a big hug when I see Doug, and I don't see him that often. Usually, it's only at this tournament. But yeah, yeah, uh, he's usually flying around the world. So, um, so it was uh, nice to see him. Nice to see McLean. Boy, that kid's grown up. He's gotten a lot taller since I coached him when he was a goalie. That's for sure. <laughs> but um, but again, Halo is something that we love. Something that uh, is important to us, and uh, we're not quite sure if we're going to be back there next year. But uh, well, and it's we'll, not we'll, not because we don't want to play there, but just because we may end up playing. You know, possibly, we'll have to wait and see what happens a year from now. But we might be in the Alberta Golf Tour Major Championship at that point. Yeah, we'll, we'll see what uh, happens. But we will have a team of Mul- from Mulligans and Hackers representing. The, yeah, if, if we don't attend, we'll get Darren and Jake and, and maybe there, some of the other guys to play, right? There will be a team in, in there that represents Mulligans and Hackers, so uh, yeah, so that's that's that. So we went out and played four four person scramble. Yep. And again, we where did we finish last year? Third. Uh, we finished. Yeah, so we finished third last year. We shot like twenty one under, I think, and we finished third because of handicaps. We lost. We lost to a team that shot six under or seven under, and a team that shot like eight under. And with their handicaps, I think. Uh, the number one team beat us by a full stroke, and the second place team beat us by half a stroke. I mean, it's not about winning. It's still fun to win, but it's not. A, I mean, there's so many Again, opportunities to us, raise money, but we want we yes, want to we play wanna, well. But the 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 event itself is, itself is so much fun, um, and we put together a team like you, me, Jacob, and Darren. We all have things that we excel at, and yep. in, and in a four man scramble, our goal is. Let's see how low we can go. Hundred percent. Right? See like, how 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 low we can torch right? that course. See how, see how low we can. And again, it was got Cottonwood Cooley, which that was my first time back this year. Uh, yeah, I so I played in the morning uh, in the eight eight a.m. shotgun. Um, Jake and I both played. We played with his buddy James, uh, and we went out there and we uh, played around in the morning. And you know, I wasn't originally going to play, and then I, I was off anyways. And they asked me, they're like, "Do you want to come play in the morning?" I was like, "Oh, cool." Yeah, sure. Why not get a feel for the greens, you know, and, and immediately, like, we got we got teed off on the first hole because James usually walks, so that was kind of cool. We got to play it naturally, right? And uh, I was like, man, this is like riding an old bike. Like, it, it was awesome. So I made my way. I lost the ball on one, lost the ball on two, as per normal, when I play out there. And I made my way around at 10 over, and I'm like, you know what? That's pretty good, considering I haven't played here all year. I'm pretty happy with that. And, and the course, I, I just want to say, the course is in phenomenal shape. Um... Mac, Jenny, and their crew out there, Stu and and his crew, like it looks really, really good out there, guys. Um, we were that, and for those of you that don't know, uh, that was our home course for the previous three years before we moved to Medicine Hat this year. Yeah. Um, so we've played close to three hundred rounds down there in the last three years. So uh, yeah, <laughs> and when I went down there and we teed off on seventeen. Yeah, we were seven, yeah, seventeen B. Like, we were. It yeah. was. It was literally like we had left. Yeah. So we had that feel right off the bat, but he had to get used to the greens a little bit, but yeah. we'll get into that. So, I mean, we got down there. Um, you guys showed up. We had our lunch. 
which happens beforehand, check in, register. Um, we all went over to the range, hit a few balls, um, got our feel on the putting green, did the putting contest. Um, Butchered that. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think any of us, none of us sunk any putts. I think the only time I've seen one putt sunk the entire time we were like parked in front of that green watching, I think I only saw somebody like drain one. Yeah, last year I drank two out of three, but I mean, whatever. It, yeah, it's all fun. But it was an uphill, a little slight. Yeah, little, a little, slight a little break. break. I hit so. the same putt three times in a row, breaking to the right, miss it, miss it on the right side. But uh, yeah, so it was good. And then, you know, and then we all headed out to our holes and uh, shotgun start at one o'clock. So um, this year we were off on 17. We were 17 beasts. We were second group off 17, um, which is uh, a drivable par four if if on a normal day it was pretty windy that day though so there was i don't think there was any way we were kind of we were getting there that day Um, so the setup for that was i was hitting driver first because i was going to put a ball in play yep and then everybody else was just going to go and do whatever they wanted ham smash or uh you know again do whatever they wanted so i put one down the left side just in the first cut yep yeah and then everybody And and then i i swung i took a i actually took a three wood um and i put mine up the left side as well but probably 30 yards further than Alvin's. And then I think both Jake and Darren put theirs into the water uh, off to the right. Yeah. And I mean, that's that's the whole idea of a scramble. Once you have a safe ball in play, yeah. then you can just go for it, right? So before we get too too far into this now, we we have a system where I put a ball in play because we'll, we'll use most of my drives because they'll be in play. So... And, that, and, and, you, and we had to use at least three of everybody's exactly. uh, tee shots. Yeah. So going into this... Um, you know, we always worry about what three drives we're going to be using for Chris's. Yeah. Because it's usually on the par threes because he can hit the, uh, hit the he greens, can hit the greens yeah. and we'll take them from there. But just remember that for when we're done talking about the tournament. Yeah, and the other thing about this tournament, so we um, we each bought one mulligan each because uh, that's as many as you're allowed to buy. So we each bought one mulligan and we got a gimme string. So the uh, gimme string is about three feet. So we had, we had 12 feet of gimme string to work with. And the way that the gimme string works is on any shot um, into the hole, essentially, you can add it from where your ball ends. So if you're if you're hitting an approach shot and you end like six inches away, you can add those six inches on and it doesn't add a stroke. It just finishes, it the, finishes second, the second or the third shot. So right? there's a lot of opportunities to get for, for eagles and, and... And possibly albatross, albatross on the far five. Which, I mean, which, which will come up as right? well, right? So, so yeah, so we start on 17. We, we take my, draw, my first drive uh, of the day. We're off to the left. Um, Which sets a tone for taking drives, just so you know. So, so we get out there and, and we all we all chip it. Um, I think we all I think we chipped it relatively close. Yep. I, I think we were. Uh, I think I want to say we were like four feet, maybe. Jacob made that chip. Jake made that first chip, and it was really really good. Yeah, yeah. So we had a system where typically, like drive wise, I usually go second. And then chipping and potting, I'm usually the the last guy the to go. Anchor. You're yeah. the anchor, yeah. Because uh, my short game is really good, and off the tee, um, I'm random. It, it could literally be anywhere. So yeah, so we chipped it close. Um, I I want to say who made the putt there? Did I make the putt on that one? I think you did. Because we, yeah. we didn't use string on that one. No, we didn't. So, uh, yeah, I think that was one of the very few holes that I actually had to use my putter to, yep. uh, that so day. So it was straight up birdie on that one. So, yeah, straight up birdie. I think I, I, I seen three lines at it, and I, I sunk it. Um, so we start with a birdie, which is a great start. So then we get on to 18, which is a par uh, three, three over the water. Um, playing we, about 140? Yeah, the wind was into it. Or, no, the wind, wind was helping us. But it was like, it was a front flag. Wind was helping us a little bit. And we all ended up just short. Just short. And I think we took mine on that one, right? Yeah, we took yours because it was just off the front. Yep. And then uh, Darren got up, chipped. And then Jake pa- draw, walked up and hit a nice little bump and run, drained it for birdie. Drained it for birdie. So we're walking off the first two holes like two under. Birdie, birdie, two under. And we haven't had to use a string yet. No. And, and we, got, we got one for Alvin, one for me in the books. So then three, we get up there, uh, or sorry, one, we get up so there, which is our third there. hole. Yeah. Um, again, trouble to the right. Uh, we all we all hit balls. Um, Jake hit a beauty drive out to the left. Alvin hit a really good drive too, but Jake's was like just in front of the sand yeah. trap. His was like literally just off the green. If he so. didn't pull it a little left, he was probably going to be like, it, it was a really good drive. It was awesome. So so we get up there. We uh, 
we chipped that one close and i think i think that was either jake or jake or darren made that putt so we had another birdie no string no string on that one either so we had another birdie so we're three under through three yeah and, and we're moving without without using any strings and i was like yeah this is this is how it should be right right so number two uh number two, two is, is one uh, of the toughest holes on that course yes because of the way the uh the tee box angles towards the fairway yeah and it's kind of like a boomeranging right hook or uh, uh, like the the fairway it, it is a right it, dog leg fair, it's a right dog leg but the t the tee box is like it doesn't face that way. it doesn't face that way it faces straight to the hill and a tree so it's kind of you got to kind of angle yourself off that tee yeah, box. Yeah. So uh, we, yeah, we played uh, that one a lot. We we hit. You hit a really good drive. Jake hit. Well, his, I hit mine into that bunker that's in front of the shit on the right, which and, is about 20, 25 yards more than you used to hit. Yeah. Well, so when I when I went down there and I saw that it was in the bunker, I was like, "There's a difference in my drive this year. Like I'm getting 25, 30 more yards out of that drive because I would have never hit that bunker before. No, you would have been well back. And yep. then Jay. Uh, we ended up taking Darren's because that's the longest men's longest drive, and he drove it as far as the long drive at that at that point. It might even be the, been the it guy that bit, won, it was but he was longer. just it, just in the rough, he was so in, he missed out on that one. Fairway for it to count in a long drive, and Darren was probably about three feet ahead of that drive, but he was in the first cut, so it didn't count. So we took Darren's drive on that one because it was a really really good drive. Yeah, we took Darren's drive. Um, we hit a we hit a chip um and then it was a straight putt jake drained that one yep. it was literally or no no darren drained that one because he was our he was our first part right, right. darren drained that one because it was a natural bird for him because yep. we took his oh, approach right, yeah. shot and we, we took, took his putt we took drive chip and putt yeah yeah so it was a yeah. natural bird natural bird so we're four under through four so uh number four sorry number three is uh Water in front. So number three is a drivable green. It's two fifty seven with water in front of it. But it's got it's got a creek that runs right in front of it, so you have to clear the creek. The green is sloped back towards the creek, so if you could hammer it into the green just to get it to stick there, it's it's good. And it had a front pin location. It did. So, and again, our strategy with that one was I just put a seven iron out there, just right around the hundred yard marker, and that allowed everybody then to go and try and clear the. Hit the green or just clear it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, so Dar- um, Jake and I put ours both on the water. We didn't quite make it. And then Darren hit driver. Ended up just off the back, which, you know, both Alvin and him give two different looks. And I said before, I was like, I don't want to be chipping downward. But I looked at it and I'm like, based on where the pin is, that's not a bad chip, actually. No, because you just chip it on the green and let, let the slope do all the work. Yeah. So right. we so we took Darren's again on that one. So uh, back to back. And then uh, we chipped it down um and then ended up making birdie yep. um i can't remember if we used string or not i don't um, think we did i don't think we did either there because i don't think we used string on like the first five holes and then uh number five is a or sorry number four is a that's that where they do that chip yeah so it's a chip crocker memorial hole so you don't actually tee off from the tee markers they move the tee markers up so it's like a chip off Yep. And then if you chip, if somebody chips within, there's a rope attached to the pole. If somebody chips to within that, you get your name on there for a draw for whatever the whatever they're they're giving away. Um, so we, so I chipped within within the pole, and then we made our putt for birdie. Yeah. So then uh, number five, drivable, drivable green, drivable green, trouble to the left, everything's open to the right. Um, we, I hit a, I hit a nice little five wood. Out to the right, drew her back in, ended up on the front edge of the green. So we we were putting. Yeah. yeah. So um, we had four cracks at it, and we we left it. I think I want to say like two feet ish, and we ended up we we discussed it, and we used some of our gimme string yeah. for an eagle there. So so that was uh, that was awesome. So so we went eagle on five. Um, so then we go to. Number six, again another drivable green. Yeah, and there'll be a, there'll be a go for the green if you haven't seen it. So uh, our first of the year in the pa- <laughs> in the past, number six was we always did videos on our YouTube channel and they're still on there. All of us going for the green on six because kind of have to cut it over the. Well, Chris would take it out and fade it in. I would actually have to go right over the tree line to and put it in the air to have an opportunity to get it to the green. Yeah. But I think I hit that green six times last year. Yeah, you were on it was crazy how many times you were hitting it. And I that didn't thing. make an eagle. But 
Yeah, so but I was like, it was so cool to be back there to go for the green again. And so there will be some videos popping up here and there of, of all four of us going for this green. I hit a shit shot. I made it to the fairway up over the, the corner. Yeah. But I was like, that was so bad for my for my attempt at going for the green. This and I, I made it on the corner, just didn't quite get up to the fairway. Um, Jake hit a perfect ball. It was tracking towards the uh, t- tracking towards the green. Um, and he ended up just on the fairway in front. Just in front. Yeah, so we took his drive. Which mean which meant we had four chips at it. Uh, we put one of those chips close, and then used our gimme string to get another eagle. Yep. Which huge. Huge. I mean, in a in a straight up scramble format, it w- those both would have been birdies the last two holes. But I mean, because of the gimme string, you and can the get some. String is part of the uh, yeah. It's part of raise of money. So you, I don't know how much it is to buy the, the gimme like string. Like twenty bucks or something. So thirty. Everybody bucks. buys the gimme strings and utilizes the gimme strings in this tournament because it's it's how halo raises money as well yeah for sure So there was like a hundred and something golfers in this tournament yeah right and everybody buys a 20 a 20 dollar uh gimme string well just yeah your gimme gimme string and your mulligan like that's 40 bucks or or 50 bucks or whatever it is Yeah. and i mean that it it just raises money for halo right it's good the first year we didn't buy them because we were a little bit more serious yeah and then we're like why not why not use them take take your advantage and again it's just for us, it's donating money to Halo. And yes. That was, that was part of it as well. Now that we have them, we're going to use them. And we're going to use them for the Eagles for sure. Oh, yeah. So we we went back-to-back Eagles. So then we get to the $50,000 hole-in-one hole, hole number seven. We got you know we got a picture in front of the helicopter again, as we nor- always do, um, which you guys will see. Uh, we'll, we'll get out on our socials when we get it. Yep. Um, wind is howling. And it's a uh, like it's 155 or 160 yards usually. Usually, top pin location, back right as per always. Um, really g- tough green to hit on a good day, and because all the par threes at this course are tough. Well, because they all have elevated tee boxes. Right. So, so that one is probably the toughest, and that's why it's the fifty thousand dollar one. Hundred um, percent. I think I clubbed up two clubs to like a, a three hybrid, and I hit it, and it was online. But I didn't didn't even make the green. No, it died short. Died way short, and I clubbed up two clubs. That's how much wind was blowing. So I clubbed up. I clubbed up to an eight iron, and I often hit pitching wedge from where that was because of, because of the difference in elevation. And I curl. Uh, I overdrew it a little bit because and the wind didn't help because it was pushing that way. And I was pin high against the fence. But the fence out to the left, over the bunker, out by the fence. I yeah. Mean, you know, it's it's unhittable from out there. Yeah. So we did. So and then neither Jake nor, or uh, Jake and Darren both put theirs in the water out to the left. So we end up taking Alvin's drive. Yeah, and I'm like off the front. Yeah, off the front. So so we go and we hit four chi- four chips. Not a single one of them is close enough to use a gimme string. <laughs> so then it's like fuck. Okay. So then I took my mulligan and I rechipped and I just about dunked it. Yeah. And and then we ended up we ended up parring that hole um i think we made a putt and made the par uh, so we ended up parring that hole so then we're moving on to uh to number eight uh shout out to the shot girls uh <laughs> on that hole they were uh, they were trying to make that hole as memorable as possible and i know jake had some fireball and i think darren yeah, had some darren pink had whitney some, so. and uh yeah it was good so we get we step up on that one drivable uh, drivable par four yeah drivable par four so I hit a three wood. Yeah, I want to say I hit a three wood, and you missed yours out to the right and ended up on top of the hill. Yep. A weird miss spot for you. It was a weird miss spot. For so me. Darren crushed his up right, right. I crushed mine up right, and I think Jake was off to the left somewhere. He was in play, but off to the left. And I was like, I was, I was uh, center green hot, yep. and I'm like, we were gonna take Darren's, and then we seen mine, and it was like, oh, okay, never mind. We're gonna take that ball. So we get up there, um, we make our chips, we chip it close enough that we can use the gimme string again, get eagle. another eagle. So that's three eagles on the front, one, uh, and that balances out the par we just had to take. So then we get, uh, we get to hole number nine, um, par three. Yep. So uh, we hit that, one, hit that one out there. Um, who did we take there? We took Jacob. Jacob hit a really nice, uh, really nice tee shot onto the green there um and so once we got jake up on there we made our we made our birdie we may have had to use string i can't remember um so we finished the front with a 22 11 under on the front with three eagles and a par and the rest were birdies 
So we're off to, we're all, we're thinking, okay. That's that, what we want it to be. Like, that, that's a real good front nine. We had a number in our mind where we wanted to be. If we thought we were going to like, like do at least place. Yeah. We had a number in our mind, especially based on other people's handicaps, right? So, yes. Yes. So we're right in, right in line where we want to be. Yeah. So we make the turn. Um, number 10 is you can drive it if you cut the corner and go over the hill, but it's tough. So Alvin hit, Alvin hits his drive. That hole plays really well for me because I can just play a big sweeping freaking hook. Because like, <laughs> we talked about how much extra yardage I have. I actually cut that hill, and that was my drive we used. I know it was. And it was you were half, you were like a quarter of the way up the hill. I was just like, about oh, to the fairway. I was or almost to the, to the uh, green. green. On, that, on that hole. And yep. I have never played that hole like that ever. Because it was always three wood out to the fairway. Because I always wanted it in play. I couldn't cut the hill. Yep. But man, I cut that hill, and I was like, oh. And everybody was like, oh. That's actually good. And when we got up and saw where it was, I was actually pretty surprised that I got it to where it, yeah, to man. Where, to where it was. So we used your drive. We chipped. Um, and then we ended up. We ended up. I think Jake's chip got it up to the top tier. Uh, to nope. No. Both him and I were on the bottom. We ended up. We ended up putting from the bottom. I wanted. Or no. No, we did. No, no, no. Somebody got it up to the top. Yeah, and yeah, we, yeah. we ended up putting from the top. So we made that. We take a. We take a. Uh, a birdie on off to number 11, which again, another, another drivable, drivable hole. Four. So I hit mine. I absolutely come underneath of it, shoot it straight up in the air, basically. It's like, I don't know, 145 yards out. Because if you play that hole and you miss to the right and do that, it's like, oh, you still got a wedge in your hand getting into it. And you hit your drive and, and you ended up, I think you were, jo- oh, you were short front, maybe? Yeah, short front. And then uh darren hit his lost his a little bit to the right hit the cart path no idea where it went jake did the same thing and we thought his was gone so we we drove up we were gonna take yours yep. and then i look and i'm like well whose ball's on the back and i'm like there was no trajectory on that nope. so i go over there and it's jake's ball and it hit the cart path or a tree and bounced off bounced behind off just to the back of the green and it was actually in great shape yeah it, it was good so we had four chips at it and three of us lipped the chip yep. for a legit eagle. Lipped it. And it was like hanging on the lip. So then we ended up to using like maybe an inch or two of our gimme string and taking an eagle, taking right? An eagle on that one. So that was awesome. So then we get to uh, hole number 12, 12 par which three. a par three. This was the $25,000 $25, hole. Okay. Um, so we get up there. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We... Yeah, yeah. So if you get a hole in one, it's twenty five grand. So. Yeah. So I, I think I was short. You were short, and Jake was in the water. And Darren, Darren looks at me, and he doesn't have a pitching wedge in his bag. <laughs> and he says, he's like, "Can I use your pitching wedge?" Because I said to him a couple holes back, I'm like, "If you need a pitching wedge, man, just use mine." He's like, "Can I use your pitching wedge?" I'm like, "Sure, man." I was like, "But if you get a hole in one, like, you, you owe me some money here." And uh, so, anyways, he hits, he hits a ball, and when I tell you it was like a foot from the pin, I'm not shitting you. It was. It, it was the closest anyone had been the entire day to a hole in one on that. Oh day. yeah, that the lady that was watching got up real quick because there's a ridge running, in there, and she started running towards the hole because it was looking really good. Yeah, man, and that was like we were all kind of like, oh shit, here it is, here it is, because because he hit and stuck, but it just kind of like did a little roll towards the hole. Yeah, because like, the cause hole was kind of on us on a on a hill, right, like back towards the hole, and he hit it, hit it just long enough that it kind of caught the ridge a bit. And came back, so we ended a foot from there, and we uh, we just used our gaming string. We discussed, and we said, "Well, we'll use some gaming string for that, and take take a one, take a one. Right? So we'll take a one. It's not a hole in one, but we'll take an eagle there with the gaming string. You bet. And uh, and then moving on to the next to one. the next par three. Yeah. So then on that one, which was uh, it was a ten or fifteen thousand dollar hole in one hole. Um, we I hit mine, and I thought I was short, but I got a big hop. Rolled right by the pin, and I think I was like two and a half, three feet left. We ended up taking mine there, and uh, we made birdie. Yep. No string birdie. No, no string birdie. So then the, the ne- uh, next hole is the only par five on the course. So the gimmick there was any donation you make, you can move up a tee box. So we're playing the blues. So I, I, I got 20 bucks out because I knew there was guy, the donation hole. I was like, I'll donate 20 bucks. We'll hit from the whites. Well, that makes it drastically shorter. That's, it's a totally different par five because it take kind of takes the water on the right out, takes the shit on the left out. Because playing this this hole, you know, the previous three years, this was a tough hole for me. Uh, I started hitting hybrids off of the tee box because I hit my driver, and if it wasn't arrow straight, 
you're in the shit on the left because my landing area there was shit on the left shit on the right i only had about 20 yards left to right of of landing area with my driver yep so if i wasn't like dropping it in, in a in a in a hole um i'm either in the water on the right or in the shit off the left so i started hitting a hybrid so i couldn't get to the water so this relatively short par five became an automatic three shot hole for me right right which i would actually like to play that hole this year with my extra little bit of yardage to see if i could actually clear that water you might be able to do it right i, I mean no the other idea change. was the other idea was going down there and playing from the front tees and the gold tees and seeing how low we could go <laughs> yeah. in a four-man scramble i still but, want to do that and, so, and and videotaping it'd be amazing whose drive did we take there we took mine. So you put you put out a beauty drive. I did, yeah. And then I I I played like I don't use driver most places anyways. And I can and as we've discussed all season, I can't fucking hit it right now. Like I literally can't. It's like watching a child try it to hit a golf ball. It's actually pretty bad. I'm not gonna um. So I I actually hit a five wood from there, and I and I drew it right right in off the hills. I started on the right hills, and I drew it into the center of the fairway. We are five yards back from the end of the fairway with like a hundred and 15 120 to go maybe 100 even. 110 yeah it was in, it was inside 110 okay so yeah so we ended up taking my drive again and then we all so you guys you guys hit all hit your approach shots okay dude i shit shanked my approach shot left your first one ended up actually in the bunker yeah so, so you didn't know that though because you thought it was gone i thought it was gone because yeah. it was so such a bad shot jake jake shit shanked his to the left ended up deep uh darren i don't know what the fuck he did with his ball and then i and none of us hit a good approach shot there. And then, and then I stepped up and I put mine to like four feet, four and a half feet. And I was like, okay, that's good. And then we said, I was we, like, we had mullies to use and only like, a few well, holes left. Yeah, and I was like, oh, I'm going to use my mully here while I fucking skull fuck it to no end. I'm like, well, at least I got my mulligan used, but it was a terrible. So instead of, of missing mulligan. left, he missed right. Yeah. And it was it was into the water, I think. So no, it, no, I found it. Oh, it did was, you? It was down just off the front of the tee box, the number. Oh uh, Jesus, number 14, 15? 15. That's ridiculous. So yeah, it was terrible. So, anyways, we get up to the green. We got an eagle chance. Uh, we the goal was to try and get it tight enough to get an albatross, yes. right? Like we were hoping yeah. we could put the approach shot tight, and that green's tough as it is. But we were hoping we could get one approach shot tight enough to take the albatross. But we never we didn't get one tight enough. So we step up there, um, got four putts at it. I think Darren putted his and went by a little bit. He wasn't too far back. Jake putted his and he just missed it. And then you and you put or I think he lipped his and then ended up like six or seven inches away. You putted yours and ended up right on the edge of it. And then I had a chance for a natural eagle. And I lipped mine and basically did exactly the same thing. So I mean we took like an inch of gimme string again for an for an eagle. eagle. So uh, that is, so I mean there we go. We're at six eagles, right? So that's that's pretty incredible. So then next hole, uh, next hole is a par four. Um, I can't even remember what the fuck. Oh, I hit mine out to the right. You hit yours out to the. Uh, I was uh, right. I was uh, I was right in that in the shit there. Yeah, yeah. You, we're in we're. First I think we're all right. Yeah. And then Darren Darren put his uh, a beauty drive right out in the middle of the fairway. Yeah. So we took his um and then we chipped it and then ended up taking a birdie yes so then we get to 16 which is our final hole last hole in one hole that i think that one was worth like 10 grand 10 or grand. something yeah and uh you know by that time the hole it was backed up we sat on that hole for probably 25 minutes waiting for everybody in front of us to play yeah we did um i can't even remember oh jack came by and told you guys a little fun yeah, story we're not there. Telling that story here. <laughs> no we're definitely keeping this PG. uh so at least, at least pg-13 <laughs> we're not telling that story here so anyways we we go to tee off and i think you go first you shit shank your freaking drive to the left and basically land on the stairs i think jake goes next and i've never seen an inside out freaking draw like it was inside out and it was like out and like a cartoon character going back to the left. And I'm like, four left, yelling. <laughs> and it's just like, just about trying to kill somebody on the box. And then I think, what did Darren do with his? Oh, he w I think he hit the green. I think he hit the green. Yeah. And then I, I went and then I put mine closer on the green. So then we ended up, we ended up taking my drive there again. And, uh, and so we get up there. Um, yeah, we get up there and 
we we had lot we had lots of gimme string left yeah or or like a like three quarters or yeah. or a full string left so i think everybody or the you guys first three uh the first three you guys potted and we were within like i don't know a foot maybe yeah. less than a foot and i'm like well we, we got a guaranteed birdie so i was really aggressive with mine i missed it so we got our birdie there so at the end of the day so we finished we finished uh 12 under on the back and 11 under on the front for 23 under 43 we took seven of my drives so that's what i was going to get at like which if, is crazy if you would have told us we were going to use seven of chris's shots off the tee box and guess how many of your drives we used three three drives of yours yeah. isn't that we crazy three of mine which we thought we would use more of mine less of chris's so that just that just proved you got off the tee box really well that day yes yeah and, it was a good again, day so you getting off the tee box well actually elevated our team's score absolutely and jake with the flat stick because he made a lot of putts a hundred percent man that again just elevated our our team a little bit so everybody was playing a little bit better in their weaker areas which really helped helped right and i mean so we took three of your drives seven of mine we took uh four of darren's and four of jake's so So if you would have said we would have took more of your drives at the beginning of the day and and let like i would have the fewest Nobody would have said no that. Chance. No, no chance. Not, not, not a single chance. one of us would have, we would all would have said, yeah, I'll take that bet all day long. Yeah, you bet. No right? chance. Yep. So, I mean, 43 on a, on a par 66, minus 23, unbelievable score. Like we said, we might have been able to do one stroke better on the par, on the that, par we that we left there. Uh, but extremely happy with how we played. Very, very well done. But, I mean, at that point, you're just like, you don't know what's going to happen because you're you're at the mercy of, of, the, handicaps, of the handicaps, right? handicaps after that then, right? So, we went and had a steak dinner. Fantastic. Fantastic. Oh, my God. Shout, yeah. shout out to Cottonwood's uh, uh, kitchen staff. Uh, great steak, great trimmings, great everything. They always put on such a, g- a good so, event. Yeah, uh, so again, good. I haven't had a bad meal at a golf course. Like, since I started playing golf and doing tournaments like this, like, Medicine Hat was great this year, but like the last three years, yeah. we did this stuff yeah, at, man. Cot- at uh, Cottonwood. Like the meals have been like next level good. Yeah, and it, it it's it just makes it that much better, right? More fun. Um, so yeah, we did that, and then you know we we went through uh the MC stuff where they were talking about different things. Uh, you know they were doing door prizes, they were doing the putting contest prize, the fifty fifty prize. So they, so in years past, we've won fuck all. Uh, this year, our team actually got drawn, and we won. Uh, I, I think we each won a set of wine tumblers, wine tumblers or, yeah. or like tea tumblers or whatever, which yeah. is cool. So, I mean, it's cool to win something, right? Yes. So we were one of the teams that won something as a door prize. So yeah, that was pretty cool. Yeah, and, and last year we finished third. Um, and I mean, I think we got like twenty five bucks to the pro shop or something because because they don't they don't put a big uh, premium on winning, right? Because it's about making uh, uh, fundraising for the tournament. Um, so this year. Um, you know, we're sitting there and, you know, they say third place is 10 B or whatever it was. Third place. And and I'm like, okay. And then second Second place place was five. Yeah. Whatever it was. I was like, well, you know, Uh, I was like, are we just not in the top three? I'm like, I'm like, we should, we should win. But I I actually was kind of like, yeah, well, you know what? With some of the handicaps that they have out here, it is possible that somebody shot a great, a great scramble round above their handicap above their handicap yeah, for sure. it was like yeah that just puts us out of it right because we we would we had to shoot what we shot just to like get a foot in the door right well yeah because i our like, handicaps are, are like i'm a i'm a 12 or around a 12 you're like a 14 and then jake jake and jake and darren are 18, 18 to 20 yeah. and i mean you know so that that means that we got to shoot relatively low if we want to kind of combat those high handicappers but lo and behold, I mean, he go uh, Lance Dahl from uh, uh, Chatton ninety four five. He's like, and the first annual winners of the Less Little Halo Charity Classic, seventeen B. So we won oh, mulligans with mulligans and hackers. Mulligans and hackers. So we won. Um, so I mean, it took us three years, but we won. We won the tournament, which feels pretty cool. And this, it was, and, and it's pretty start- cool that we won the first annual Less Little. Yes, exactly, and. For us playing in this tournament, we did want to get a win somewhere down the road here. Hundred percent at this tournament because you know it's special to us. So, like I messaged my father-in-law afterwards and said, "Hey, buddy, just a heads up that we won the Halo tournament scramble," and uh, he was pretty he was pretty happy about that. And my mother-in-law messaged me and she was she was quite happy. So, us getting a W at this tournament that means a lot to us personally uh, was something we wanted. 
So I was pretty, I was pretty happy that we got the W. It, it was pretty cool. I, I mean, we got our fifty dollars gift cards for the pro shop, which uh, I mean, again, that's just a, that's just a nice little that's just bonus. A caveat. For- just a caveat for the people, you know, getting the W. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, again, like it, it's we're competitive, but we wanted to. The idea is to challenge ourselves to see how low we can go because we know if you play well out there, you can go low, really low. So, so that was so much fun, so much fun. So, what a great way to set the tone for our weekend, right? So, so we so we, we end there. I think like seven thirty, eight o'clock. Um, Darren had to jet out because he was playing some ball. And uh, so we end there at 7.30, 8 o'clock. Well, we got an 8 a.m. tea time for round one of the Tour Championship, Tour championship. in the morning. Tour right? Championship and, weekend for the boys. And I, there's the four of us playing, right? Because yeah. Jake's in town, but he's, he had to leave last night because uh, he's going to a concert today in uh, in Edmonton. Um, so, you know, I got out in the afternoon with him and, him and James for, for a second round yesterday. But you, myself, and uh, um, Clark and Dave all went out in the morning. Um, eight oh six tea time. First round of the tour championship. Triple points on the way to go, and uh, you know the jacket. One of these things that we're wearing, and we each have yep. won one before. So, are well, we you, wearing a new one or you, are we wearing old ones? You've won two, and I've won one. That's right. Right. And sitting here next to you will be a lot more difficult after tour championships if I didn't have a jacket. It's true. So I won in 2022. Yep. Um, I won in 2021 and, and 2023. 2023. So yep. we went into this weekend. Yep. I was actually playing better golf. You were, yep. I was happy. Um, I was happy with where my game was. So I was going in with a, with a better mindset and a little confidence. So I was like, all right, let's do this, right? So we get into day number one. Yeah, day number one. So, so before we teed off, we decided that day one we would play from our normal whites. Day two would be from hybrids, so yellow whites. So day one, um, day one, we get off and running on on you know par five as per normal. Um, it was a, an an auspicious start to say the least. Let's say I bogeyed, you doubled, Clark bogeyed, Dave took a triple. Yeah. So we don't have to go through this hole by hole, but let's let's just kind of spread it out over maybe nine. So, okay. Okay. So um, you know this this opening opening round. Um, you know, I did okay. I hit, uh, I hit three greens in a row, but you know, I, I three putted one of them. Um, I only had two pars on the front nine for the first, for day number one. And I had two doubles. doubles. So I came out of that with a 45. So I was at plus nine. I yeah. Was, you know what? I was okay with that for how I was playing. Cause again, I wasn't playing that great. My fairway to green was again, sketchy. And my putting wasn't kind of where I wanted it to, where it had been like the previous week. So getting through the first nine for me at plus nine, I was like, okay, you're set. You can you can play the back nine better. And um, I was okay. So you were at plus nine. Um, Clark was at plus 13. And Dave was at plus 15 after the front. And I had uh, a ridiculously good front nine. Yes. Like yes. probably the best front nine I've ever played. I start. I, I went bogey double, and then I made like a thirty foot birdie on hole number three, which really set the tone for my day. Um, and then I then I followed that up with a double on, on the on a par on number four on a par three, which I don't usually do. But then I went par birdie on six, par par bogey to finish at a plus four forty on the front. Right, a solid. A oh, solid opening nine for a tour championship. And I only had three fairways and two greens on that, which was even crazier. And I made, but I made thirteen putts, so my short, my chipping was really what what yeah. kept me in there, right? So we're at 40, 45, 49, and fifty one after nine. Yeah. So I mean, you've got what five strokes there? Uh, five strokes. Yeah. Five leads strokes. five. Leads five after after nine. So we're through nine. He's got five strokes. So it's like, okay, you know, that's a little bit. That's that's quite a few strokes on nine holes. That's you know, that's almost half a stroke a hole. Mm-hmm. So it's like, okay, I'll rein it in on the back. Um, I had just double bogeyed nine. So we make the turn to go to 10. I double bogey 10. I triple bogey 11. I double bogey 12. Yep. So I am um, seven over through the first three. And that, my frust, I started to get frustrated. That was my first club toss. 
in a long time. It was, yeah, for sure. Um, on the when I tripled on the par five, I I I gave the club a little a little twirl um, at the cart. I, I was the front, you know, and I've been my head has been in good shape this year for that. But I wasn't. I was taking myself out of it at that point. And I'll yeah, say, you were. You really weren't. I lost, putting I, the pressure on. But I lost. I lost my game there for those four holes. You did. Number nine, you did. 10, 11, and twelve. Yep. I was like, "Geez, you had been hitting the ball so well. You had worked on a lot of stuff. You worked on your on your takeaway and where your where your back position and shoulder position need to be." I was like, "Okay, that's enough. Let's get back to playing some golf." So, through the next six holes, um, I birdied seventeen. Yep. Uh, so through the next six holes. I went one, two, 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 two over. I went two over through the next six holes. So I had three bogeys, a birdie, and a par. Two pars. Two pars. Yeah. Yeah. I parred. I parred sixteen and eighteen. Yep. So that two over through those six holes to finish the round, but to still take forty five on the second nine. So I shot a ninety that day. Yeah. You you were consistent consistent through both, but that's that's two over through six holes. I don't play the back nine usually that well, so I was I walked off that course. I knew you had a lot of strokes on me, and we'll get to that here in a sec. But that six hole stretch put my mind back where I needed it. Hundred percent to, to go into today on, uh, as the Sunday. Yep. So I started not. I started ten. I took a six iron off the tee box, and I ended up right. And I'm like, well, I don't really got to look at it, but I'm like, well, I can go up and over because I hit really high wedges. So I grabbed a pitching wedge and I absolutely like it was front pin. So I hit it and I hit it to within like I don't know two feet and drained it for birdie. So that's how I started my back nine. Yeah. Um. So and then I fourteen, which is longer par three. I hit probably the worst eight iron I've hit all year. Lost it out to the right. Hit, it took me two chip shots to get on. Then I two putted for a double. Then I proceeded to double 15, which is the long par four. And then I went par par after that, bogeyed 18. And I, so I went, I, I, I managed to recover and shoot 40 40 for an 80. And I had a chance to break 80, but I couldn't do it. I, st- I, I, I needed, I needed a, I couldn't par. I just lit my par actually on 18, which is what caused me to shoot 40 40. So, so, you, I, so I got a 10-stroke lead on you after day so one. So, yeah, I went 45-45 for a 90. You went 40-40 for an 80. Yeah. Um, that is an opening championship round that we've never had before. That is a an, an elite an elite next-level uh, opening round for Tour Championship. So I finished with 27 putts on the day. That was that was where it was at, yeah. man. Like, my putter was firing. So, so, so uh, Alvin finished with a 90 that day. Clark finished, or uh, Dave finished with a 97, and Clark finished with a 101. Yeah. So, so I, I knew coming out when we were leaving the parking lot, I wasn't terribly frustrated because I finished strong, but I knew 10 strokes was going to be a monumental task to make up today on this Sunday. But going to the course, I was like, I'll just start playing and see what happens. Because um, today we were playing from the hybrid. So we were going to get some different looks at holes, and, you know, number one being one of them. Yeah. Right? Uh, so one, one, two, four, and eight on the front were all from the yellows, and then the other ones were from the whites. So... We go out there today. We got a 7:56 tee time, so another ridiculously early freaking out of there tee time. So um, I tee off first because I've got the lead. Well, I shit shank a fucking shot up the right side, and, and, we're, we're, and where the tee box is, we're tight to the uh, range t- net and tree line on the right. Yeah, and I mean, all I had to do was hit my normal draw, and it was going to be money. But no, so I mean, there was a little shakiness there getting off the tee. So. Um, I ended up going, I, I ended up doubling the first and parring four, and I bogeyed the rest, and I shot a 45 plus nine on the front. So I get off. I hit my drive, obviously, in the fairway because that's kind of what I do. Um, but I hit the green in reg on, number, on the first hole, but the dreaded three putt rears its ugly head, and I bogey that first one. Now, I gain a stroke on you on that hole. Yep. Um. That three putt kind of set the tone for my putting on the day. My putting wasn't. My putting didn't get me out of any trouble today. You did. You did say yesterday that you might take the putter out of the bag because you were not happy with it. I did, I, but I <laughs> again, I put, left it in the bag because again, it's about that comfortable. Yeah, right? for sure, for sure. Um, so three putting the first hole and taking a bogey. 
I was like, oh, Christ, here we go. Not not that it put me in a bad frame of mind, because, again, I took a stroke on you. Yeah, yeah. Um, and you know on the first few holes that you can well, make I, headway. I, I have to make some headway on the first nine. Yeah. Right? So Because I, I play the back nine typically better, yeah. and you play the front nine better. Yeah. So then we get, then I play number two. I put my, my drive just in the first cut on the left. Uh, I did came up short of the green, but I chipped it tight and tapped in for a uh, a par on number two. Yep. So you took a what on number two? I took a bogey. So there you go. Two holes. I've got two strokes back. You betcha. So then we get to number three, which is the, the second par five. Yes, sir. I put my shot out again to the first cut on the left. Um, I hit a really good second shot. Out to the right? Out to the right. I actually was close to a tree, but I had a shot. And I put my um, my third shot on the green. I'd say eight feet. Eight feet. Yeah. And I actually made the putt for a birdie. Yep. That was a good bird. So... And I and I took a bogey, so you picked up two there. So you're so you've got four in hand already. So you're only six back now. Three, three holes, three. three holes in, and I've got four four strokes back. So I'm like, this is all you need to do. Just keep playing it this way. So um, we get to number four. Um, I duffed my tee shot, came up really short, chipped it on two putter for a bogey there. I took so, a par, so I got one. So back. So you got one of those strokes back, right? Yeah. Um, then we get to number five, and this this is the hole. Where, because what did you, you parred that one? No, I bogeyed. You bogeyed, and I, I, I went out, I was so far left, I had no approach, I had to punch, you and, and I ended up going bogey, and you hit a beauty drive. So I hit a great drive, I hit a great approach shot, I am in birdie territory, mm -hmm. and I three putt. So when we walk off there and we're tied, I'm like, I gave, you know, we both equal. Give at least two away. But I gave you at least a stroke there. Yeah. And I was, I was like, no, you can't do that on those holes, Alvin. Like that three putt, you're hitting greens and three putting, and that was not three putt territory. No, not so, even, no, even for you, like that's a you got to yeah. make those. So then on number six, you know, I put my drive out, took a bogey. Then we hit the number seven, which is a which is a par three. And so you hit your tee shot first, or yep. Dave hit his tee shot first, hit a really nice ball. You hit your tee shot first, and from where we were, it looked fucking close. It looked really close. And then I hit my tee shot, and I was like the furthest point on the green from the pin that I could possibly be. And I looked at you, and I said, well, there's two strokes, yep. probably. Yeah, yeah. Like, so, two strokes. So I get up, and who hit first there? I think it was Clark that hit. No, uh... I putted first. You putted first. I putted first. I missed. I didn't quite get it to the ridge. Uh, left myself a little work to do. I ended up. Um, well, because I was. Uh, oh, I three putted that one. So yeah, I ended up with a four. Yeah. And then Clark putted, and then you stepped up and you drained her. I drained her. It was about. It was about an eight nine foot putt for a birdie, mm -hmm. and I was like, boy, did you need that one? Because that was two strokes. T typically, that was the two strokes I just gave you on the previous two holes back. No, you only gave me one back because okay. we because. So at that point you were one, two, three, four, three. So you were five strokes back after that. Yeah. So that was going into eight. Going into eight, and I put my drive on number eight out to the left, but I hit the green two putter and I got a. Power. You didn't just put it out to the left. You put it over the fucking trees. That was an <laughs> aggressive line, but I liked it because I, I said to Dave, "I'm like, man, I was like, he knows ten strokes down. He has no choice but to be aggressive." Yeah, that's actually one of the uh, on that hole. Because we played from the yellows there. Yeah. From the whites, it's it's a tough. Two yeah, you shot ain't hole getting there. Me. Yeah. From for me, it's a tough. Two that was shot an hole. advantage hole for you. So I put it over the trees, maybe a little left of where I wanted it to, but I was only in the first cut. No, it was a great ball, and I made a great approach shot to put it for a par. And I got out of there with a bogey because I hit a beautiful eight iron, but I got knocked down by the trees, and I didn't really have a line. So again, it was just I was I was out of position all through the front. I just could not get myself into position. I, I think I hit. I hit one fairway and one green on the front and muddled my way to a fucking yeah. nine over. So, so you picked up another stroke there. But then we get to so number now you're nine. Four, so now you're four back. Four back. So on number nine, which is uh, a hole, I just play my drive out to the right because water to the left, just avoid that. Um, but it took me three to get on because I hit my drive out to the right. I kind of had to punch it forward. Third shot got me on the green, but I was a little deep. And then I wound up three putting again. So I took a double on number nine. I took a double yesterday on number nine. So as soon as you made that double, I had a I had a putt for par because I, I it took me four to get on, or sorry, a putt for bogey. I and it took me four to get on, and I was like, shit, if I make this, you know, we're back to five strokes. So I stepped up. I make my bogey. 
I shoot a 45. You shoot a 40. So it was a, 40. a reversal from yesterday. Yep, exactly. So, so I got a, that's my second 40 on the front this year. Yeah, and like, I was it, like it, you shot a 40 last weekend too. Yeah, on the I front. was I was like, well, you know, I did everything I could on that front nine to get myself closer. I chopped off five strokes from from your lead. Yeah, I'm like, we got nine holes to go. Anything can happen. Absolutely, and da- and and Clark shot a 48, and Dave also shot a 45. So Dave Dave was uh, sitting in third. Um, Clark Clark sitting in second, or sorry. Dave was sitting in third, Clark sitting in fourth, and you you were still sitting in second, five shots back. So we make the turn. So number 10 is also from the yellows. Yes. So, again. Um, drivable from the yellows. You you bet. You bet. Drivable from the yellows. So I hit my drive. I hit the fairway. I'm not that far away. Oh, you ba- you were barely away from the green. Like, you hit a bomb. Yep. I hit my drive, and I actually I tried to sweep hook it in, and I, I hit the tree. We had no idea where it was. We found it on the number one fairway. I actually had a wedge in. I, I hit That was like one of the first greens I hit all day. And it was actually a really good shot because I knew even if you had trees in your way, you were far enough back that you hit your wedge. Was like oh, and it, high. and it was like, it was a 58, so I, I was going over yeah. anyways. So then I ended up three-putting and taking bogey, and I was like, fuck, that's not what I want to do. I'm on. I got to double, double putt that. So I chipped mine not too bad, relatively close. And again, I, a birdie opportunity that got away from me on that one. But I tapped in for par. a par, so there we go. I got another stroke on you. Yeah. So right. now you're about you now you're four or four behind. Right. Yep. This next hole there was so it's a par five. Um, played it from the whites. Yep. Um, I took a real aggressive line down the inside of the did. trees. I hammered a drive out there right in the middle of the fairway. I was like, this is exactly where I want to be. And this hole kind of, I haven't played this hole because. It's kind of like that S. Yeah, it's type, got like an S bend in it. Right? You you hit your drive straight out. Then you kind of got to go, your second shot has to be out to the right if you want to look at the green. Because if you go straight up, you have trees in your way. You won't. Even, it's a four-shot hole then. Yep, yep. Um, so I I actually clubbed down. I hit, a, I hit my uh, six hybrid. I was like, just hammered out to the right because I want to look at the green. Yep. And that's exactly what I did. I put my second shot in the best shape I could on this hole. I hit my approach shot. Again, I duffed it, and it came up just a little short. So now I'm going to be on here in four. And I'm like, well, just get it on in four and, you know, two putt. If you can get out of this hole with a bogey, you're, it's a W for you. Yeah, oh, yeah. Well, I absolutely fucking skunk my fucking chip shot. It doesn't even make it to the Worst green. shot of the weekend. Worst shot of the weekend on a hole that you need to make. So then I had my next chip shot, which was a relatively better, and uh, two putted it for a double. Yeah, so I, I hit my, I, I smoked a five hybrid, got it on the fairway. I was on the right side. I, I pull, or I, I tried to stay down the right side, but I hit a little bit of trees. Ended up on the left side of the fairway with an eight iron. So then I had a pitching wedge, and I kind of had trees in the way. So I knew I had to start it right, and the wind was blowing to the left. So I, but I lost it right past the sand trap, past everything. So then I kind of chipped it. I ended up on the fringe. I'm like, ah, shit. There's no way, like, I got to make this for par. Well, I cozy it up tight, and then when you made double, I stepped over my bogey, drained my bogey. I'm like, got a stroke back. Yeah. yeah. Back to five Back to five stroke difference. So then um, it was in my head that, you know what, Alvin, you, you really gave some, some territory away on that hole. So uh, you get up to the next hole, and, I, and I'm, I'm not frustrated, but I'm like, you know, you have to do something epic out here. Um, it's just, I probably didn't help myself mentally here, but I was like, you for the next like six holes, you have to do something epic here to get yourself back into shape because, again, you're not going to give me all these strokes back going through. But I did hit the fairway on 12, came up a little short, chipped it close, one putt. I got out of there with a par after my double bogey, and I'm like, okay, you're two over through three holes on the back, that you're still in shape right now to finish okay. Yep, and, not, s- and see what happens, right? I also parred that hole. Uh, that was I, I hit a green, so second green in three holes that I hit. Uh, Two parted that one, got a par, got the hell out of there. So then we're on to thirteen. So thirteen, fourteen, and fifteen are three of the toughest holes on the course, and we played them from the yellows. And it was actually my worst stretch of the day, which is crazy. Which is crazy. So, but it starts on thirteen for you because it it, it does like. Like you made pro, well, I say your chip was the worst shot of the day. I mean, the next shot might not be as as good either. Um, because I hit my uh, I hit my drive terrible on this one. Um, uh, out to the right, out of shape. Um, no, you hit it out of bounds. Oh, right, that's the one I've, I exactly. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. 
So now I'm, I'm caught up here, and I said totally forgot. I hit a drive with such a slice on it, which I never do. So we're a forward tee box, and I hit the worst drive of the weekend. Yeah, on that one, I put it OB, so I'm three off the tee. So then I hit my next shot. On There's water two. left. There's water left <laughs> with rocks all around it. So I take an aggressive line over the left side, right over the water. I don't have enough to clear it. So I don't clear the water. I'm like, oh, fuck. I'm looking at a terrible blow-up hole here, right? So it actually hits the rocks towards the end of the water, gets a massive bounce. Ricochet right onto the center of the fairway. But about four, like 35, 40 35, yards 35, 40 yards forward. Yep. So I'm literally just off the front of this green. Well, yeah, you had probably about a 80-yard shot yep. left, I think. And I didn't hit a great shot there. Um, I one-putted for a double on this one with the drop. And this is where... And I and I ended up parring, yeah, so I got so, two back there. So I'm like, you know, at that point, going to the next tee box, which was the par three. Yep. We're moved up a tee box on that par three. I'm like, you know what, Alvin? Okay, you may not be able to catch Chris here, but let's score well. Yep. Let's Let's score well. So you can at least walk off here today knowing that, you know, I gave you a run on the first nine. I got strokes back. I, I, I tried my best at the beginning of the second nine to get some more strokes back, but it was it was kind of up and down. Um, I get to the par three, and I pull my drive into the bunker. Now, bunker shots, they don't bother me. No, you're usually uh, one of the best bunker players we have. Exactly. So... I'm not even concerned. I know you hit the green on that one. Mm -hmm. So I know you're, you know, again, I'm not probably gaining, looking at a par, which yeah, I did. I, I, and I'm not gaining any strokes on you here, but I want to score. Well, I hit the absolute brutalist sand shot, put it into the front lip. Hang on. Yeah, I'm I not know. there yet. I know. I know. So I put it into the front lip. It comes right back to my feet. So I'm like, God damn it, Alvin. Like you're really good out of the bunkers. What are you doing here? So I set up for my second shot. And I skull fuck it over the green into the bunker on the other side. Bunker like, to bunker. Bunker to bunker. And then I hit a th the third shot was a terrible bunker shot as well because it didn't put me in shape. So I get out of that hole with a with a max six. And yeah. So I mean, we we only we play it so that to keep pace of playing to keep everybody in it a little bit is that if you have a blow up hole like the max you can play and get is double par. So so you took a six. Um, I made a par, so I picked three strokes back up there, and I looked at Clark at that point, and he's like, "Oh, Alvin's having a blow up hole," and I'm like, "It's over now." Yeah, I was it, like it is 100 percent yeah. over now. It is. I, there was not enough holes, not enough strokes for me to get back, but I was okay with that. I was, you know, I I gave you a run. Yeah, I, you put that. You put the pressure on again. I did exactly what I wanted to do, and I kind of floundered, floundered on the midway through the second nine. I was more disappointed that I wasn't putting up the score that I wanted because I was giving some strokes away. And you made uh, such a good front, like right? at the turn, like you you could have had a chance to do something. Again, I've special, done it two right? weeks in a row, and I like shoot forty on the front, and then I like shoot forty seven on the back. Yeah, right? yeah, or, yeah, like, yeah. That, that's exactly what you exactly, did. Exactly right. Twice, yeah. So, so then we go to fifteen, which is the hardest hole in the golf course, but we're up a forward tee box. Exactly. And I'm like, I hit a six iron. I'm at the one fifty. I'm like, beautiful. You hit a nice. Everybody hit a nice. I, yeah, I had a great drive. So the fairway. Uh, I get up there and I fucking yank a fucking pitching wedge. To the left, hit a tree, end up in the bunker on the next par three. Yeah. Fucking barely hit it out of the bunker. Fucking, I end up. Uh, long story short, I bash it around, take a take a double. I'm like, whoa, yeah, like I hit a fucking fairway with less than 150 yards, and I take a double. That's uh, atrocious. I duffed an eight iron, uh, just got it short of the green, had to chip two putt. I took a bogey on that one. Yeah, so you picked and, up and one. Again, and again, but again, on that hole, which is the toughest hole there, um, playing from the yellows, I should have scored better. Well, we all should have scored better. I said that. I'm like, we're, we're shooting basically exactly what we shoot from the whites. So, right? Right? So we were playing the hybrids and playing from the yellows, there was really no change, right? No, we had two doubles and two bogeys. Yeah. And we shouldn't have had, like, we should have had pars, really. So the next one was par three. I hit the green, two putt. Again, I gave a birdie away on this one. I was just, I, 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 I missed it low when I, I thought I had the line, but my pace kind of, my pace took the ball out of the slot that it needed to be in and I tapped in for a par on that one. So when I when I was when I cuz I walked both days and and Clark walked yesterday and then you guys all carted today. And I mean I just enjoy walking. So as I'm walking to myself and we made when we made the turn, I said to myself, I was like if you get one birdie, you win the championship. I was like just get one. Find one somewhere. That's all it's going to take for you for you to to just do it. 
And uh, so 16, I hit the green. And I don't know how gravity works, but gra apparently <laughs> gravity doesn't work on that green because my ball literally stopped, like, on the fucking hill at the top. And I'm looking over this putt as Clark goes and chips uh, from the side, and I'm like, if this gets within three feet, this is going to be a fucking bloody miracle. So I turn, like, I'm fucking sideways. Like, because it's a big left-right sweeper. So I got my knees together, like I'm fucking knees together, feet together, and I'm just making baby baby strokes. And I'm like, all you got to do is fucking breathe on this ball. So I putt it, fucking goes, turns, center cup, drops. And everybody's just like, holy fuck. Yeah. I'm like, yep, there's a birdie. That was, that was a really good putt at a really crucial time. And, uh, you know, your, your, score, your game on the back is in where you want to do to score well again, right? Yeah, so, yeah. So that is, the next one is a par five. We play it from the whites. And I play this par five as one of my. Favorite. Usually, you score fairly well. I score on this fairly hole. well on this par five because it's a relatively straight one and there's, shorter and shorter. And there's some, tr you know, tree trouble left and right. So I hit my drive out to the left, and I'm actually behind a tree wall. And I'm far enough back that I'm like, well, I can hit a hybrid high here. I, you know, I actually have the ability to hit a hybrid high for some reason. Um, so I hit. I'm like, you're out of shape, but if you get back to play. It becomes a three hole shot or a three shot hole, and you're good. Well, I hit my hybrid high, but I hit it right at the tree on the other side of the fairway. And I am literally in the worst possible shape because I can't swing at it without hitting the tree in front of me. So now I'm into punch out territory. So I punched it out and uh, got it on the green in four. I wasn't in terrible shape. I was actually to the back of the green, I guess. I had to come up over that ridge. Yeah, because you clubbed up. Yeah. Because we were, because exactly. the wind was in our face. Exactly. Because I, I duffed my tee shot, didn't even make it to the fairway. Hit a five hybrid, got it inside the one fit or just outside the one fifty. And I, I was actually going to hit an eight iron because it was eight iron distance. And I'm like, on a seven because the wind's in our face. Yeah. Well, I fucking went skyrocketing. I hit it on the green, rolls all the way back. So then I had to chip back, and then I, I ended up making a bogey. Yeah. And I three putted for a double. Yeah. So I'm like, you know what? You're blowing up your back nine here. You know, you just try and minimize the damage here because, again, I don't want to go 40, 40, 47 again today like I did last week. But we get it. We get to 18. I hit the fairway. Like, I, I crushed it up there because... It was a beauty drive. It was a beauty drive. But, again, I I, I fatted my, 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 my approach shot again, and I didn't come anywhere close to where I wanted to be. And But I did chip it close. Got a bogey. Uh, got, I got a bogey out of that. A yeah, putt bogey out of that, anyways. And I finished with the bogey as well. So you, you so you did. You went forty, I went 47. 40, 47 on the back, and I'm like, Jesus Christ, Alp. You know, like I could. So I did the exact same thing playing from the hybrids as I did playing from the whites last weekend. Yep. So, yep. Did That's I great. Do, it, 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 no it, advantage. No advantage. Right. So and then so I I shot eighty from the whites yesterday, and I went forty five, forty one for an eighty six. So I, I so I added one stroke on today. And then Clark shot a 96 today. Dave shot a 95. So I get this nice new, you know, nice new third tour championship jacket right here. It's pretty nice. Now, like I said earlier in the podcast, I have put the jacket on Chris three times. He has put the jacket on me once. It would be a lot more difficult sitting here next to him if I did not have my own jacket, at least one major in the books for the Alvinator. And the craziest part is the year that you won was the year I had a torn Achilles. And yep. I just about won. Uh, my game wasn't where it needed to be, but uh, but I, I did put some pressure on you in that tournament, and you were able to hold off, hold me off. So yeah, exactly. Good. And uh, if I did not have a jacket, we probably wouldn't be doing this podcast. Because <laughs> I don't think I would be able to be sitting next to you with you with a whole bunch of these fucking jackets and me not having one. Um, yeah, this whole thing might have been killed by now we might not have been doing a tour <laughs> at all but i do have a major i do have a jacket i i'm a i'm the 2022 tour champion so so we can keep this going for another little while but it's getting really fucking sick of handing you major trophies pal well i mean so i finished one uh for a net score of 166 you finished with 177 i beat you by 11 um dave finished with 192 to finish third big dave with the third place finish uh, Clark, he finished uh, with a 197 to finish fourth. Uh, so this tournament was worth triple the points. So that that solidifies that your chase for the Jug Champion for the third time in four years. 
This guy right here. Yep. This guy right here wins his third jug in four seasons. The only and and Clark has the other one. And again, four you, seasons. You don't have I a don't jug. Have, I don't have a. I don't have a cup yet. So um, I'm still sitting on one major, which is the Tour Championship. Wins are up for grabs still this year because this is my third. You have two. Yep. So, so we still have the purple sombrero, so we could tie. So next week, next week is our match, match play. play championship between the four of us for double points. For double points, that's fine. But it's for the purple sombrero, which is a major championship again. Correct. So I still have a chance of grabbing another major this year, my first major in you know two years. Yeah, um, because you, you, your only major is a tour championship. Tour championship You've lost out in the in the major in the yep. major championship three times tw or twice. Sorry, because we only had it for two years, yeah, right? Yeah. And then, so then this is our first ever Purple Sombrero match play major. Because so the, the first pur annual. The pur Purple Sombrero used to be our, when we would leave town, the out-of-town points was the Purple Sombrero. But this, we're getting to the point where we're not touring for our champion, our tour anymore. It's more of a local tour. So we needed to, we needed to hand out the Purple Sombrero. We, got, we had to figure out a different way to hand and it out. And we really wanted to try match play against each other. So next weekend will be match play for the Purple Sombrero. And if I can somehow pull out a win in the match play, <coughs> which I am still, I'm, I, I've got well, a lot of confidence on in it, game on, right now. Dude, honestly, uh, like, I'm number one going in, and I'll play Dave in the first round, I think. It might even, I don't know, we'll have to see the standings. Yeah. He might have surpassed Clark, I'm not sure. But I'll play the fourth place guy in on day one, and, and you're number two, you're going to play the third place guy on day one. But really, it's match play so crazy because it's score hole. Yep. Let, or your yep. hole score. So, I mean... I mean, you could tie for a whole bunch of holes and last hole wins it, right? 100%. You know like, I mean? I mean, it doesn't matter. Like, stroke play, you can build. Whereas, if you're tying holes, like, it's just another yep. animal. Like, so, like, nobody... Literally, any one of us could win. Yep, exactly. And, and it's a different format for us that we haven't used, but it's something we wanted to try. And it gave us the opportunity to do the Purple Sombrero for, in match play. And I was like, yeah, that's a great idea. I love it. I right. love it. I mean, the guys are around. It's a long weekend next weekend. We get a three-day weekend. We'll play Saturday, Sunday. We'll see who can win the Purple Sombrero. Yep. Um, I mean, I think Cl did Clarky win it as well in his year yep. where he basically he cleaned yep. up everything? Yep. The only one he didn't win was the Tour Championship that year, yep. I think. And, uh, yeah, and it's funny. Dave, Dave said to me after after yesterday, he's like, hey, you ever think about breaking your or tearing your Achilles again? <laughs> <laughs> no, I no no I have not. But Win, winning never gets old. So yeah, we're getting to the point in our tournament now where they're actually between you and me. We used to always play relatively close. There is a there is a significant gap in our games right now when it comes to scoring. Um, I watch you go around the course now, and you know your ability to scramble. Is is way way beyond where mine is. Mine is still kind of that hacker type of scramble game. If I play from the fairway, I could score relatively well. But if I'm out of shape, you know, like I'm almost a guaranteed a double bogey. Where when you're out of shape, you're putting yourself at back into play. A good approach shot. Worst worst case scenario for you is a bogey. Yeah, well, like where uh, best case scenario for me is a double bogey, right? But but I mean, I get into those spots. Like I, I played from a lot of them in the front nine today. Like where I was out of shape, and I'm just like. Well, you're just going to have to eat a stroke. You did this to yourself. You yeah. got to put it up. You yeah. punch it up, move the ball forward, punch it somewhere where you can get on, get on in three, give yourself an opportunity to maybe try and get a par if you can make a, a good third shot. If not, then you got to get out of here with a bogey. And I mean, and, and I take the occasional double, yeah. right? Like yeah. when you when you put yourself well, see, in trouble. You, you take the occasional double, but throughout an 18-hole period, you're, you have a better potential of birdieing to take that to take, to mitigate that that double. Right? Well, so, well, that's like that's like yesterday, right? Like I had I had uh, two two birdies on the front and one on the back, and I had four doubles, yeah, or four double bogeys yesterday, yeah. and three birdies. So well, I, that basically erases them. I had two birdies on the front today as well. Yes, right? which is crazy. That's so, good for you. Yeah, I was I went like a month and a half without a birdie, and now on the back to back weekends, you know, I've scored a couple birdies in 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 uh, rounds. So. I, yeah, back to back weekends on your forties. Didn't yep. you have double uh, two, two, two two birdies yep. per per nine? Yep. Which is awesome, yep. right? Like it, it's definitely out there to get them. So and again, so this is where my confidence and my you know, I wish I could score better on the back, but again, that's that's me be putting myself out of shape. But i have seeing the birdies come now. Yep. Right. So again, finishing the season this way for me, I'm happy with it. Yeah, man. Right. So I'm interested to see how I go down the stretch here now. Not necessarily with our games because we're you know we have one more weekend of of 
Well, Power this stuff. this is where this is where our games always diverge because I'm getting you know school season starts in a week, um, so my golf is going to become few and far between, yeah. and you're and you're going to play as much as you can during I am, the weeks. So, yeah, so, so as I, leagues tail out, when so. leagues tail out, I'm going to start getting more nine holes after work. Uh, you know, from Tuesday, Wednesday rounds, Thursday rounds. Um, I'm just going to go by myself again, get the nine holes in, get some more work in, and see if I can finish. You know. See if I can do some work on my handicap here down the stretch, and you know I might even start playing from the hybrids. Well, I, I mean, so I again, I, if you think about it, like you said today, if we were playing Alberta Golf Tour out there, if we'd, we'd right playing, now we'd be playing from the hybrids. Exactly. So, so you know, that's, that's just where we are, and you know it's been a fun year again. We got one more major to go. Yep. And um, you know we'll we'll give you a chat about that one when uh, after next weekend. Yeah. Uh, anyways guys that's our halo and tour championship recap thanks for listening i still got um, a jacket i got i got three of these puppies I'll, I'll add this one to my collection um you know it just i'm like tiger with his green jackets just got to keep winning them yep that's and what happens i like i said it would be way tougher sitting here if i didn't have one we might not be sitting here if i didn't have one i made a happy gilmore joke to alvin on the on the final hole there after i after we i hit my approach shot i said to him once i knew i was going to be up near the green i was like you know what I'm a, I'm a 48 tall, but my left arm's a little longer than my right arm. <laughs> yeah, you can stuff that shit, though. Anyways, guys, take, uh, care. take care, and we'll catch you on the next episode. Later. Appreciate it.